Okay, so here's here's the problem. Hear that? If you guys have a washing machine that has the controls in this configuration that has this type of start button with the with the uh, uh, the gray rubber and the pause and then it has the dial like this and then it two and sometimes three controls over here you really need to watch this video these come under a couple of different brands uh, Admiral I think Amaral is one uh, Whirlpool and Maytag uh, for sure, I think those four brands, but maybe even others that come in this exact same configuration and uh, It's the exact same washer. So this the fix that I just applied to this could apply to your washer Hey dudes and dudettes, how's it going? Brad the Guitar just here uh, This is a washer that I pulled off the curb about a week or so ago a week or two Maybe the guy had already put out a dryer the previous day and I had grabbed it I walked up the street with my free dolly and grabbed it off the curb then I went back the next day and he had this out there on the curb this is a washing machine that went with the dryer and I had surmised at the time maybe the wife had told him just to put the washer out also because she wanted you know a matching set uh, and maybe this washer worked because uh, I talked to him about the dryer and the washer. He said the dryer, he thought the motor had gone out and the washer, he said something, he thought something was wrong with the agitator. So we're going to take a look at this. Like I said earlier in this video, this is a probably a common problem on this particular model and it comes in four different brands. So a lot of you guys are going to have this exact washing machine, possibly with this exact problem. And I'm going to show you how to fix it. Um, this was the one that came from right down the street where I had suspected the, you know, the wife wanted a new set. And this is an Admiral. It's, it's made by uh, Whirlpool. And you'll get this in different names. I think Maytag, uh, Whirlpool, Maytag, Admiral um, are all similar, if I recall correctly. I tried starting this one earlier and uh, I had forgotten that you have to elevate because you're going to get obviously a siphoning. Uh, you're gonna get a siphoning issue if you leave uh, if you leave this drain just on, out on the ground it's just gonna it's just gonna drain straight through anything you try to fill up the tank the tub with maybe I'll zip tie it to these holes I'll put a zip tie through these holes right here and get it up elevate it and then we'll drain it that way but you have to do that because otherwise it's not it's just gonna run everything right out on the ground so we're gonna do another test on this one okay we've got it plugged in to power we have elevated the drain now with a zip tie up here, so we shouldn't have the uh, siphoning issue. So let's see what it does when we fire it up. We'll put it on a light load with cold water and a large water volume. The reason for the large water volume is I want it to... Um, okay, is it gonna go? Yeah, but anyway, the reason for the large water volume is I want it to uh, rinse out as far up the tub as it can. What, you know, any grime that might already be in there. Maybe I didn't hold it long enough. Or do I have to push it twice? I don't know. And we got water coming in. I could probably even throw just throw some clothes in there. But if this one completes like the last one did, I'm gonna go ahead and probably conclude, like I said in the beginning, that this particular machine was just a case of the wife or whoever, you know, it might have been the husband these days, just wanted a uh, matching set. Because uh, the first thing that they threw to the curb was the dryer, this guy. We're gonna look at it. Probably not in this video, maybe another one. I do have the uh, power cable for it now. I don't know, it was maybe uh, $12, $13, something like that. I think I found it one for. Uh, so I won't have much invested if I can fix this um, with just a cord and maybe some cleaning out. I'm thinking, you know, cause a lot of dryer issues, they end up being a case of just like a, a, a thermal shut off. 
Um, you know, everything inside is so packed with lint that and it hasn't been cleaned out in forever. So I'm thinking I could pop that back door off. Um, pop. There's some inside covers as well that need to be popped off so you can get in that properly inside of it. You know, the heating element could have gone out of it too. I don't know. Or it could be a motor. It could be something else. We'll figure it out. We'll do that in another video. But look at this. So here's my newest acquisition. I found this on the curb. This, uh, well, let's see what is today. Today's Tuesday. So this would have been yesterday or the night before last when the trash was put out. But this one is an Echo backpack blower. And it appears to be complete and it appears to be in pretty good condition cosmetically, which leads me to believe this might actually be one of those easy ones, man, that, you know, maybe somebody thought they were upgrading. Maybe they just didn't want to full of gas anymore. I don't know. It does have some funky smelling fuel, so it might have sat for a bit and they just couldn't get it started also. So we'll, we'll have to see about this one in another video. Um, and again, uh, you know, to those of you who are complaining about uh, this being a different direction than you're used to on this channel this is uh this is something i'm doing right now because i don't i don't want to be honestly i don't want to be cooped up inside when the weather is this nice you know who wants to be cooped up inside in a lab or on inside bench you know looking out the window at this when you can be out in it you know it makes no sense to me I, just for a little bit I need to get out in the sun and uh, clear my head and do some different things, um, work on some different things, you know, hone my skills in some different areas that I'm not used to uh, working in. So if you guys enjoy this, I appreciate it. Um, hit subscribe below. We'll do some more of this and we'll get right back to this machine as it continues to run. We'll figure out whether or not uh, it's going to run for us. I might even put some clothes in it here in a bit. Still filling. This one doesn't even smell bad. This one doesn't smell bad at all. This is a very clean machine. And you can tell it's very clean. It's just, I don't know, man. Uh, this can't be all that old, I wouldn't think. Now this one, on the other hand, this one kind of stank a little bit when I first got it. And you can see this scum line right here. So when you fill this up to maximum, it comes to about right here, which explains this scum line. Um, well, actually, no, it comes to about in the middle of the scum line, I believe, because uh, I had a leak on the exit hose out there, and that's that was causing some issues, so it, the level kept dropping on me. But uh, you see the scum line inside of this tub, and there's really no way to clean that out unless you, unless you tilt the tub forward. Uh, there is a way to do that. The manual shows you how it's done. I think you have to take these off right here, these suspension mounts on both sides. You might even have to disconnect some other things. You might have to disconnect the uh, all these wires from the motor as well, probably, to be able to tilt this thing forward. Uh, you'd have to disconnect the pump. That probably should be disconnected and uh, examined too and cleaned, you know, before being used. But you can see this this top will pop off of this, this this lip on the top, and you can clean that. You can clean inside the tub. The inner tub will actually come out as well. The uh, agitator all will disassemble, of course, and come apart. And you can clean each of those parts separately if you want to pressure wash it out, or if you want to uh, uh, you know clean it with soap and water by hand and everything. That's probably the way to go with it. But uh, that would probably cure the, the smell probably it's not that bad but it does have that little bit of you know like you're in the laundry room and it's kind of musty sort of a smell so yeah we're starting to get some darker clouds gather here um, and unfortunately this machine over here is still filling up so I don't know if we're gonna be able to complete this cycle as I'd hoped I'm hoping uh, that the rain at least holds off for another hour or so, so we can complete this cycle. The maximum fill level on this is pretty high. I mean, obviously if you had clothes in here, it wouldn't 
it, it wouldn't use as much water to get up that high, but some of the space would be taken up by your clothes. But it's going that way on up there. It's been going now for going on probably going on ten minutes or, or over that. Sensing this washer will perform a series of spins to check the load balance. So if you have the lid open, you can't just close the lid and have it start again. You have to close the lid and then hit the start button. Yeah, that's, I guess that's good to know. Oh, there, it went to the top. So I guess we'll test that right now. We've got a blinking light. I mean, it's actually blinking in reality, not just on camera this time. Okay, so we'll close that. Is it gonna go on its own? No, it's still blinking. I guess that means it's paused. So we'll hit the start button. And now it should start. It did lock and now it should start. So I'll come back at the end and we'll see uh, how far we got. What is it, Banjo? What is it, Banjo? Come here. Come here, Banjo. Come here, Banjo. What is it, boy? What is it, Banjo? Okay, so here's here's the problem. Hear that? off this thing while it's in this cycle so I can try to see what's causing that problem. I'm guessing it's some kind of bearing. I don't know. Okay, here's this thing's uh, turned on its face so we can see underneath. And man, this is a pretty clean uh, machine under here the only thing I see really is um, all this black stuff which I think is grease it's got to be grease but then again is that a belt why would you grease a belt it doesn't appear to be a chain so why would why would all this grease be splattered out like this but then again you see how they have this dangling curtain of plastic it's almost like they anticipated this to do this so maybe that's normal I really don't know but what I do see the rest of it is very clean and it looks like it hasn't been used very much I mean we have not all that many even cobwebs and stuff in here like you would expect to see it just looks overall really clean in here you know there's no corrosion really on any of the electronic parts or metal bits or anything that I could see I may pull the power to this. I don't have the power off quite yet. I may pull the power to this right now and uh, get this get this guard off of here and see if this all this crap is intentional or if that is indeed a bearing. I'm thinking that this might be the uh, bearing for the agitator. It pro it's got to be right there. I don't you know the agitator is going to be separate from the um, from the outside tub. Or there's going to be some kind of clutch mechanism in there that engages the agitator and the uh, tub separately. So we'll have to see what's up with that. Okay, so here we are with this belt guard off, and you can see all the all the bits of uh, rubber and belt that's everywhere. And I think some of this might actually be oil also mixed with with it. So you've got bits of belt and oil together. This, I think, is turning the entire tub. When I turn this. I don't know, maybe. I may have to set you guys up over on the other side so I can look at the video and see what is turning because I can't be on both sides at once, so. Okay, is that the full tub or the agitator? Oh my. It feels like the full tub. 
I think we probably need to need to get in here. There's a uh, there's a bolt down in there. Uh, I need to get down to that bolt. I don't know if I have an extension long enough to get to that bolt. Man, I'm gonna have to buy so many tools to work on this crap. Um, let me uh, let me see if I can get onto that bolt. If I can, we'll take that agitator right there off and see if there's anything stuck under it, perhaps. Okay, I've had to move this thing under cover because, uh, like I said earlier, it was about to rain. And it's been threatening pretty much all day. It hasn't rained yet, but it's definitely been threatening, but I have it in here now. I was pretty much convinced when I opened this thing up that I was going to have to probably replace uh, a bearing or something like that. I started researching what, it, what it's going to take to get the transmission out and disassemble it to the point where I can get to the bear, at least the bearing for uh, the agitator, uh, which is this, this shaft right here is the agitator. I've disassembled it. I've taken some parts off. I've taken all of this stuff off here, the, all these plastic bits and this plastic bit. And I have to say, you know, with all this plastic crap, these things are not made anything like some of the older stuff. Uh, it's just not... I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and having watched a video of somebody who actually tore down uh, this entire transmission to try to get to these bearings, I can say that this is a this is a really bullshit design. They've designed this so that if anything in this transmission goes out, you're you're gonna have to replace the whole damn transmission. You can't really replace the bearings the way that you would think that you uh, should be able to. There's gonna be a bearing in here. And there's a bearing on the top side of the transmission, on the bottom and the top. I would have thought you would be able to replace those somewhat easily, considering those are going to be, you would think, really hard-wearing parts. But apparently you can't really do it. But fortunately, also, I think I've found what the problem is. There's a little motor right here, or solenoid, whatever you want to call it, a little motor, that puts this into agitate or spin mode. Uh, so it will spin either the outer tub or the or the inner agitator um, and the way that it accomplishes that is it has this little arm right here which sticks over this piece and this arm if you can see it it's actually uh, it's set in here so that uh, when it shifts it moves this up or down into two different positions so this ring will go up into this position like this high or down and what it's doing is it's taking this piece with the teeth and it's moving it in or out and if we look at the this part that the belt goes directly onto the belt drive uh, normally it is spinning and spinning the center which is the agitator by itself right when these two pieces are up and away from each other, it's only the agitator that is running because the belt goes around this and it's spinning this, and which is only spinning this center shaft, which is the agitator. And that to, there's nothing that's squeaking or grinding when I twist that. So that's telling me it's not the bearing for the agitator that we were hearing. It is, at, in fact, what I think it is, is these two gears, when this is being engaged, like this it's not being engaged far enough so what's happening is these teeth are grinding against one another but just on the tips of the teeth they're they're grinding back and forth like that just enough to make that god-awful sound um, so what we're gonna have to do is put some kind of spacer in here I think what has happened is over time that there's it looks like there's a little bearing in here a smaller one that positions this uh, in the center of this gear and it looks like maybe that has been pushed in or out at some point I don't know exactly what the cause is but we're gonna try to get something uh, that will act as a spacer which will make this go further uh, push these pieces further away that's all that caused the person to throw this to the curb was the lack of a little washer or some kind of appropriate spacer right there to keep those gears from grinding. I'm pretty certain that's the problem. Okay, now with these uh, these three pieces on here of plastic, uh, this inner gear, and you can see it's on a spring, 
uh, and then this little sleeve, which also is the retainer, and it clips in up here into this housing. Uh, and then we've got this little switch bit right here, but you can see moving this is moving this, but if this were to move all the way over, it would, it would pop up onto those uh, risers and push this thing, it would push it up like this, away. Uh, which is going to be agitator only when it's in this position. It's in the down position Which should Let it meet with these teeth and put it in the spin position So then both the spin and the agitator are spinning together at that point Because it's going to be spinning this inner shaft and also this outer tub that this grapples onto so there's that. Um, I think right now the brake is on the tub or it's uh, whatever. It, no, it's leaning, leaning. That's why it's not moving. If I were to stand this thing upright and reach in and turn this, it probably would turn freely. Um, but the problem is, once again, when this is in the down position, it's making, it's making, problem is it's very hard to observe this happening when the machine is is on and everything so anyway but that is that we're gonna get this back on there with I'll put a washer on here and that should solve the problem we'll see if it we'll see if it does okay so after some more thought about this this is gonna have to be a very specific size washer it needs to be able to go uh, over this threaded part and also over this part back here and up into there and it can't be any bigger than this because it has to fit inside of there up up against the inside of there there's a bearing you can see the ring in there that's a bearing and that is what is stopping this pulley that part right there butts up against it that center bit right there goes inside of there that hole and butts up against the bearing that's the furthest it can go the bearing is what's stopping it that needs to be pushed out somewhat and uh, I think the way to do that is probably going to be grinding the edges off of this guy because other than he's the right size for the middle but he's a little bit too big on the edges so I think if we grind off if we grind off each of these points right here into a more round shape that will go up in there and I think I think the thickness of that is not going to be too much hopefully if if it is we can either grind it down or find something else but we're going to try this first we'll see where that gets us okay while I'm here I thought I would do you guys a favor and I'll go ahead and get the calipers and give you the dimensions that you're going to need if you're going to make a, a spacer yourselves Okay, the maximum, the maximum width that your spacer can be looks like it's going to be about uh, point, point eight seven inches. So that will be the outer dimension, and the inner dimension is going to be about point five. Okay, so I've ground mine down to something that looks like it's going to fit. And that's good it's it's gonna just slip right in there and out of there easily so I should be able to reach up in there with something and pull it out easily if I need to uh, grind it down let's see where that gets us when we put this on all right the teeth still grabbing yes they are see the teeth are still grabbing on that cycle just fine that's as far in as it in as it will go right there and then uh, that should give it space when it kicks off and it's just doing uh or well when, not when this one backs out but when this one pushes up it should be far enough away from these teeth that it won't grind like that tell you what though before i reinstall this thing i'm gonna wipe it down because i mean look at all this crap on it so i'm gonna wipe this down i'll come over here and wipe all this crap off while i'm in here Okay, everything's all buttoned up, hooked up, 
ready to go. Let's see how she runs. I wonder if I can change, can I change that midstream? Can I change it to small? So I don't use as much water. Really what I'm trying to see is whether or not the, uh, well, two things actually. I want to see, first of all, whether my spacer worked to solve that grinding gears problem and also whether uh, this thing will make it through an entire cycle. And if those two things hold, then we've got a fixed washer. Okay, here we are. We're on the agitator cycle. And this thing is as quiet as can be. No grinding gears. See it moving back and forth in there. So it is moving. It is agitating. Now that's a little bit of a longer agitation. So this, the fix that I just applied to this could apply to your washer. Don't necessarily uh, make the mistake I almost did and assume that you have a transmission bearing problem when in actuality it's just a spacer is all you need to fix this washing machine. So I hope that helps somebody. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, hit subscribe down below for more videos like this and we will see y'all later.